Hi everybody, Dan Ullman here for the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day. Let's take a look at the field for Wednesday's Formulator Race of the Day. It's the Grade 3 Jessamine Stakes at Keeneland, carded as race number 7 for two-year-old fillies. A win and your in for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies Turf. We have an overflow field, and you can head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com to access your free Formulator Pass performances for the Grade 3 Jessamine. Taking the field in post position order, we we begin with Keeneland graduate number one, Lady O'Toole, going out for a high percentage trainer in Brad Cox. This filly has won three out of four lifetime starts, and I really love her tactical speed. She sat just off the pace last time out in her turf and route debut, the happy ticket stakes at Louisiana Downs, and came roaring home to win with a 72 buyer speed figure. She has yet to take a backward scale, uh, step on the buyer speed figure scale, and her tactical speed allows Corey Lannery to break sharply from the inside post and tuck in what could be behind what could be a fast and competitive pace. Expect a nice pace tracking ground saving trip for the number one Lady O'Toole. Just didn't love the field she beat in the happy ticket. Think she's going to get a little bit of a class test on Wednesday at Keeneland. The number two is rushing fall for trainer Chad Brown and this filly won her career debut in style. An 85 buyer speed figure rallying from well off of the pace. You've got top connections. You've got the top buyer speed figure in the race. You've got a race where where it's going to be fast up front. Rushing Fall has a lot of things going for her, except for price. She is three to one on the morning line. She is likely to take a lot of money, but to me, she is a must use in any sort of multiple race wager. The number three is Stainless, one of two in here for trainer Todd Pletcher. Here's a formulator fact for Stainless as she makes her turf debut. Over the past five years, with two-year-olds moving from dirt to turf and sprint to route off of a mini layoff, Todd Pletcher does very well. 38 percent winners and a return on investment of three dollars and 44 cents. Stainless is by Flatter and I have to admit I really do not like the Flatters on turf. He only wins five percent of the time with his first time turf runners. The dam went 0 for 1 on turf but the dam is a half sister to a couple of nice turf horses. The takes, stakes place turf sprinter uh, Robe the Cat and the stakes winning turf router beautiful Danielle. Stainless is the kind of horse that has not broke well in some of her races, acts up behind the gate, but is likely to get some pace. I'm just still not sure if she can handle this company being by flatter on the turf. The number four is Miss Momentum, and Miss Momentum is a positive formulator fact for Red Hot Barn. Mark Cassie is just killing it right now at Keeneland. Over the past four years, with two-year-old last out maiden winners in turf routes, stepping up into graded stakes, Cassie knows how to place these last out maiden winners. For their first tries against winners, 38%, just a huge ROI, $7.56 return on investment. Miss Momentum is by the super young stallion Uncle Mo. I bet this horse when she made her turf debut, second time out at Saratoga on July the 23rd, she was out-tripped and out-finished by Orb Yolution, who turned out to be a stakes winner, and I believe is graded stakes placed. She then competed in a race in Saratoga, in a race that was washed off the turf. I don't think Miss Momentum is a dirt filly. And last time out at Churchill Downs, she broke inward a little bit, then worked out a nice ground-saving trip for most of the way. She had to alter course to the far outside, turning into the stretch, and then she kicked down those horses in the lane. She's going to get some pace. Again, the Cassie Barn is hot. We've got a formulator fact. Miss Momentum is live at 5 to 1 on Wednesday. The 5 is Madame X. This horse should have enough bottom with three sprints to her name, but she is going to be stretching out for the first time, and some of her races are kind of slow. Her best buyer speed figure to date is only a 54. She is a Keeneland graduate by exchange rate. Her only win came in gate-to-wire fashion in her career debut, going five and a half furlongs. Hard to imagine her getting out to an easy and uncontested lead in this spot. The number six is Cash Out, who improved by leaps and bounds when switched to the turf in a rich maiden race at Kentucky Downs on September the 9th, rallying from off the pace. I thought she was very game in the stretch. That race came back slow, only a 60 buyer, but these two-year-olds have a tendency to improve by leaps and bounds from a buyer scale from start to start. She has a really strong pedigree, the right running style for this race, maybe a long shot to consider at 12 to 1 on the morning line. The seven Punto de Entrada was the longest price on the board at 34 to one in her career debut at Delaware 
Square Park on September the 23rd. She got out to a nice, easy lead on a slow pace, and that helped her when she dug in in the stretch to win by a head. Only a 54 buyer speed figure. Her sire, point of entry, could really step on the turf. Punto de Entrada, certainly capable of improving second time out, but she's going to have to improve by leaps and bounds to beat this field. If you're looking for a horse trying turf for the first time with the right pedigree, look no further than the number eight. Sunny Skies. Now, she is by Kentucky Derby winner Animal Kingdom, who is also a top, top turf runner. This is Animal Kingdom's first crop, I believe. He is only 0 for 8 with his first time turf runners, but he could step on the turf. Uh, Sunny Skies is a half to Sky Cape, a graded stakes winner on the turf, a half to a reality show, a stakes place runner on the turf. There's plenty of turf pedigree. This horse has already run around two turns and even third in the grade two Pocahontas stakes. He has kept, she has kept good company on the dirt, earned a 75 buyer speed figure in her second lifetime start. So she has proven that she's somewhat fast. She's got good tactical gear as well. 12 to one on the morning line, good connections. Kenny McPeak and Robbie Alvarado is riding in great form. That's Sunny Skies trying turf for the first time. The nine is Breaking Beauty, a second time starter going out for trainer Wayne Catalano. Here's a positive formulator fact for this barn. Past two years, last out maiden winners on turf, 25%, a $2.63 return on investment. Breaking Beauty, a $110,000 Keeneland yearling, took some money in the career debut, showed some good speed, got out there on a sort of moderate pace, and then was able to hold on in the lane. Now, she's going to likely face a tougher pace scenario this time around, but she has, again, have a good positive formulator fact in her corner. Only a 63 buyer for that debut. One of the horses that figures to be contesting this solid pace is the number 10 mentality. Gate to wire winner first out for Wesley Ward going six furlongs then stretched out off a two and a half month layoff in the PG Johnson stakes. She showed good speed again. No match for the aforementioned Orbulution who came back to run third in the grade three Miss Grillo with a 73 buyer speed figure. Mentality going to be among the pace setters in here but as we take a look at the time form pace projector that may not be where you want to be up and on the lead and mentality the number 10 according to our friends at time form she's sixth in the early portion according to our friends at time form she can't outrun sugar queen to the lead and sugar queen is stretching out of four sprints for trainer todd pletcher not only is she stretching out with good sprint speed but she's also adding blinkers and maybe the blinkers will light sugar queen up as well she figures to be aggressively ridden by john velasquez and here's a positive formulator fact for pletcher regarding the 11 sugar queen over the past three years with two-year-olds on turf adding blinkers todd doesn't do this often it does very well 43 percent to three dollar eight cent return on investment this horse tried turf in the bolton's landing stakes ran just fine behind uncoupled stablemate march express distance by gemologist, a son of Tis Now, who of course won back-to-back -back editions of the Breeders' Cup Classic. I'm not too concerned about Sugar Queen getting the distance. I just wonder if she's going to have to run too fast in the early portion of this race. The X factor is the number 12, the way I am, shipping from France and now under the tutelage of top trainer Graham Motion. This horse, I watched uh, her race last time out at saint Claude. It was a, a little stakes race over there, and she got an education. She was hustled into the pocket spot early. She was saving ground in a good spot, turning into the straight. She really had some trouble extricating herself from traffic, and then once she did, she was kind of one pace, but it was a good educational run. A lot of these European horses don't break well from the gate. That can actually work to this filly's favor if the pace is fast up front. Uh, kind of a weak field she faced last time out, though, and I wonder how she's going to deal with these fillies in her North American debut. Layla Noor goes out for a very good trainer in Arno de la Cour. She won on turf at Saratoga on August the 20th. I thought she was able to get a really nice trip, adding Lasix for the first time, sitting second off a kind of moderate pace and then kicking on home. She's going to have to deal with a faster pace and probably just going to have to come from farther off of the pace this time around. Completing the field, the horses entered in the body of the race is number 14, Rosie Oprado, who came from far back to finish third behind Lady O'Toole and the Happy Ticket Stakes. This daughter of Patty Oprado really has done nothing wrong. Breaking from this far outside post, just expect Jose Valdivia to take a hold coming out of the gate, drop in and save as much ground as possible and hope for the best. She is a late runner as it is. Uh, I don't think the post is going to bother. We'll see if she can navigate either around or through 13 rivals. It really is a fun race. This win and you're in. It could have Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly Turf implications. But taking a look at my pick in here, I'm sticking with the number four. Miss Momentum. Cassie knows how to place these last out two-year-old maiden winners going long on the turf. I like the way she kicked home in the stretch last time out at Churchill Downs. I like the things she did against the classy Orbolution in her turf debut at Saratoga. And she's a fair price on the morning line at five to one. I'm going four, 
2, 12, and 11 in the Grade 3 Jessamine Stakes Wednesday's Formulator Race of the Day. If you are betting the Wednesday Keeneland card from home, no better way than through DRF Bets. If you sign up now, you get a $300 bonus. All you have to do is head on over to drf.com forward slash fall and use the promo code FALL300. Approximate post time for the Grade 3 Jessamine, a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf. It's carded as race number seven at Keeneland on Wednesday, 424 Eastern. Best of luck.